If you're going on a cruise, you're probably pretty excited about embarkation day, but you might be wondering what are the things that I absolutely must do as soon as I board my ship. Now, embarkation day is exciting, but let's be honest, it can also be just a little bit chaotic. So you'll wanna make sure that you do certain things ASAP to make sure that your cruise starts off right and to avoid potential problems later on. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, even though I've done many cruises, embarkation day never gets old. It's as exciting every single time I cruise. And let's face it, when you do walk onto that gangway and then onto the cruise ship, you get your first look at what is going to be your home for the next few days of your vacation. Now, there are a lot of things that have changed in terms of what you need to do and even what you can expect on boarding day. So I am gonna be sharing in this video everything that you'll wanna do between the time that you arrive at the cruise terminal, just ready to board your cruise ship and sail away so that you don't miss a thing. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, arrival time. Now, before we even board the ship, you are going to need to either choose an arrival time when you do your online check-in or you're going to be assigned an arrival time by the cruise line. Now, there is some debate between should you arrive early on embarkation day, should you arrive in the afternoon and avoid some of those potential lines. Personally, I like to arrive early because this way I have just more time to enjoy that first day of vacation and to get some of those must do things on embarkation day done. Now this might be different for very experienced cruisers or even people that take several cruises a year, but if you're a first time cruiser or you don't cruise that often, I still think that arriving early on embarkation day is the way to go. Download the cruise line app. Now you'll wanna do this before you board the cruise because once you board, it can be actually a little bit difficult to download it when you're on the cruise ship Wi-Fi. Now I like to download this at my home even when I'm doing my online check-in, but otherwise, if you have different people in the party who just haven't done that yet, make sure that they do it at the hotel, maybe the day before or the morning of the cruise or at the latest in the cruise terminal. Now I do have a little embarkation day tip or hack that has to do with the cruise line app that I am gonna share with you in just a couple of minutes. Now once you've done your check-in at the terminal, and you've gone through the cruise ship security, you will be making your way onto the gangway of the cruise ship. Now, as you walk onto the cruise ship, there's that first day energy. The crew is super welcoming. You might even hear some music playing. The ship is going to look gleaming and beautiful. Take a moment, breathe deep, even take a picture. Just take it all in, your vacation has begun. Okay, now for the serious business go to your muster station and safety check-in. Now on your cruise, every single passenger has to go and do their muster station check-in. Now the information is going to be on your card as to where your location is, but crew members are going to be there to guide you. So you're going to do a very quick safety check-in. Now in addition to this, you do also need to watch a safety video. Now there are usually two ways to watch this safety video and this is where that little hack came in. So one way is to watch it from your stateroom TV. So you can do this later on when you do get to your stateroom. But the other way is to watch it on your phone and many cruise lines do have this. Now here's the little tip. You can actually save time by watching this video before you get onto the cruise ship. So usually that video is available as of the morning of your cruise. So you can watch it from your hotel room or you could watch it from the cruise terminal while you're waiting to board. Collect your cruise card. Now, when you go on a cruise, you're gonna have a cruise card or sometimes it's going to be a wearable, like a bracelet or a medallion, depending on the cruise line. But this is going to act like your key card that you would have at a hotel. And it's going to be your form of payment as well. So anytime you buy a drink or even you purchase something in the store, all of those expenses, they're gonna go on your cruise card and then be charged to your onboard account. Now in the past, you would collect your cruise card with your check-in agent at the cruise terminal, but more and more cruise lines have the cruise card waiting for you right next to your cabin door. 
Now take it from me, you are going to want to have your cruise card because if you do want to buy a beverage, well, you are going to need that. Find out when your cabin is going to be ready. Now, just like hotels, your room might not be ready as soon as you board. Now, make sure that you don't bring too much luggage on board with you. Usually what I suggest is just bring a small carry-on bag or a rolling carry-on suitcase. So something that is easy to transport with you until your cabin is ready. Now, typically cabins on most cruise ships are ready between 12 at the earliest to around two. Now, don't worry, you can still have lunch and use all of the facilities, but you wanna make sure that you're not bogged down with too much to carry. Drop off your bags if possible. Now, some cruise lines will still allow you to drop off your bags in your cabin, even if the cabin is not completely ready. Now, make sure that you just drop your bags in and go. However, if you are able to go into your cabin because it is ready, there are some things that you're going to want to do. Now, first things first, I'm gonna be practical here. Go in and take a photo because that cabin is never gonna look as clean, as good, as uncluttered as it does look on embarkation day. Now, beyond that, you do wanna be practical. So when you go in, take a look around the cabin, make sure that everything is in order. This includes the bed placement. Now, don't worry about it if your beds are not put together like a king or a queen. And if they're separated, just let the cabin attendant know a little bit later on, and they are going to adjust that before you go to bed. Take a look at the toilet, make sure that it flushes, and anything else that you can think of, just make sure that everything is in working order. Now beyond this, you wanna make sure that you put your valuables away. Do this right away. The cabin safe is safe and secure. So we always put jewelry, money, passports, keys if we brought them, we put that all in the safe right away. Freshen up. Now, if it's been a long day of traveling or just even if you need a few minutes, it's okay to freshen up. Now, something I like to do is in my carry-on bag, I like to bring just a little bit of makeup. I like to also bring maybe a change of clothes. Some people like to bring a bathing suit. If you're cruising with kids, you might wanna have everybody even wear the swimsuits underneath their clothes so that you can really take advantage of that ASAP. By the way, if you have a balcony, check that out too. Now you're going to meet your cabin attendant. If you don't meet them right away, you might meet them a little bit later on in the day, but when you meet your cabin attendant, find out their name, they'll likely introduce themselves. And if you do have any special requests, like if you need extra hangers, or if you like your ice bucket filled every day, that's a time that you can ask as well, but be patient with them because this tends to be one of the busiest days of the cruise. Now, the next two to three things don't necessarily need to be in exactly this order, and it is gonna depend a little bit on the ship, but eat lunch. So by now it might be around 1230 or so in the afternoon and you're probably hungry. So go and have a bite to eat. Now there's going to be a few places open on the ship. So there's always the buffet and honestly that is where most people are going to go. It's not necessarily a bad option at all but expect that it's gonna be a little bit crowded, a little bit hectic, and you may have some difficulty getting a seat. So look for alternatives, and that's a little bit of a tip. You can look for the main dining room that is often open on embarkation day, and otherwise, if you feel like something a little bit more casual, look for some of the casual restaurants that are going to be open. This can include a poolside grill, this can include one of the cafes, this can include pizza, and even depending on the cruise ship, a specialty restaurant. Now there is an extra cost for any specialty restaurants, but often when you eat at a specialty restaurant, on embarkation day for lunch, it is going to be discounted. Have an embarkation day drink. Now it might be a mimosa, at one of the main bars. It might be a poolside frozen cocktail, or maybe you wanna sit and relax after lunch with a coffee, but take a few minutes and toast to the cruise ahead. Make specialty dining and entertainment reservations. Now this is going to depend on the cruise line and the cruise ship, but on certain cruise lines, you are going to need to reserve your specialty dining once you get on board. Now, even though you can reserve specialty dining online in advance, oftentimes there are remaining slots for that dining that are only going to be available once you get on board. So you're going to want to go quickly. For instance, when we were on Norwegian Cruise Line, we went quickly 
and we went and reserved our specialty dining times. Now, in addition to specialty dining, there is going to be entertainment on some bigger cruise ships. You're going to have to reserve your entertainment before you get on the ship or otherwise once you get on the cruise ship and you don't want to miss out on any shows. So make sure that you do this. Now, if you weren't able to get the show times that you wanted, for example, on Royal Caribbean, what you're going to want to do is head over right away to box office. I would even do this before lunch, by the way. So just settle that and you want to be able to book your entertainment right away. Now, other things to look for are adult only exclusive areas that sometimes have limited amounts of spots and even fitness classes. For example, when we were on Virgin Voyages, we found out that the fitness classes book up very, very quickly. So as soon as you get on board, you want to make sure that you do reserve those. Explore the cruise ship. Now there's no better day to explore the ship than embarkation day. You want to make sure that you really start getting to know the lay of the land of the cruise ship on that first day so that you don't kind of make a mistake and by day six out of a seven day cruise, find out that there were some spots on the cruise ship that you would have really enjoyed that you just never knew about. Now, by the way, if you've cruised before, please let me know if that has ever happened to you. Check out the daily planner. Now there are going to be activities not only for the evening time, but for the day as well. And you can take a look at the daily planner either in your cabin, you might have the daily schedule that is printed out, but you're also gonna have this available on most cruise lines on the cruise line app. So you can take a look at some of the activities, some of the opening hours, and some of the great entertainment to look forward to. Register and visit the Kids or Teens Club. Now, if you have kids or if you have teens, this is something not to neglect on embarkation day. So even if you registered the kids in advance and even if you only plan on sending them the second day, the first day is usually going to be the open houses. Now, first of all, for practical reasons, you wanna actually see the kids or the teen area where your own children are gonna be hanging out. You'll wanna meet the counselors, but as well, your kids may already start to make friends and to get a little bit comfortable. And it's going to be much easier for them to want to go the next day or even later that evening if they do have that visit right away. Scope out the best spot for sail away. Now, most cruise lines are going to have some sort of sail away party. If the weather is cool, that sail away party may be held indoors. But otherwise, if you're on a Caribbean or a Bahamas sailing, then oftentimes you're gonna have a pretty fun sail away party at the main pool deck or sometimes the pool at the very back of the ship. So that could be a lot of fun, but you may prefer a quieter time. So consider maybe doing sail away on your own on your balcony. If you do wanna do this, you can even prepare it by having a bottle of champagne ready or even just picking up a drink at the bar before you go to your cabin. Now, I almost forgot to mention, but something I highly suggest that you do on embarkation day and ideally before sail away, but otherwise before dinner, is unpack. Don't live out of your suitcase the entire cruise, especially if you're using packing cubes. It's pretty easy to unpack, but the sooner you unpack, the sooner that you're going to feel like you're on vacation. Put your phone in airplane mode. Now, super important before sail away, because if you wait till after, you may forget. So put your phone in airplane mode. And what you can do is you can connect to the cruise ship's Wi-Fi. Now, even if you don't have the internet package, you are going to need the cruise ship Wi-Fi to use your app. The app is free on all cruise lines, so you can do this. If you're not sure how to do it, you're gonna have instructions in your cabin, but as well throughout the cruise ship, you are going to have crew that are there to help. Now, I hope that this video was helpful. I'm gonna leave a video right after this one about everything you might wanna pack in your carry-on for embarkation day, but I'd love to hear from you. What are the things that maybe I'm missing that should be on the very first day checklist? Please let me know down in the comments below, as well as any questions that you may have. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.